Welcome to part six of the order management series. In this tutorial, we will build the inventory and products interface. We'll add an action button and we will build a custom workflow that will connect to that button. Check it out. Welcome back to the channel. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Zach Stevenson. I'm a business process and no code consultant. If you need help streamlining or automating any of your business processes, you can visit our, our website, innerdevsolutions.com or you can click the link in the description below to book a free consult. We will continue using the no loco interface and application that we started building in the previous tutorial. From here, we are going to go into the inventory and products. This has already been pre-built for us when we uploaded and connected our database from SmartSuite. Similar to last time, it has used a board type interface or layout. It's an okay option but I'm going to flip this to a rows layout and I'm going to go down here to grouping. It's grouped it by the status for us. I'm just going to turn that off for now since we do not have that many products at this point in time. Something I do recommend doing as products are discontinued or uh, you're no longer selling that type of product, you can filter out those options or those items based off of uh, status within the inventory and products table. So right here, we have a status field set up already. Something that we could do from here, we have a row set up. We can go into the options up here to filter and there's a relative filter and we're just going to click this icon here, select a field. We'll use the status field and we'll make sure that it is equal to toggle off this dynamic value and active. So we really only want to see the active items or products within this interface. If we want to access archived or discontinued products or items, we can set up a separate interface similar to our part five, where we made changes to the sales order view here. We can make some of the same changes to this inventory and products interface. Something I want to do here is go into the options. I want to sort this. And I'm just going to sort it by product name. And now it's sorted for us. Now we can go over to fields. There's a few fields I want to turn off. The link to item collection. I don't need to view it in this interface. Product ID and name. That's fine. Status. I can toggle that off. Maybe I want to see price, quantity sold. That's all fine. And I'm going to toggle off the items as well. With the product ID, I'm going to click into this edit option here and I'm going to go 33% and that way it will push down the quantity sold and sets available down here. And something else I do want to do as well, I'll go into the options down to record colors. I'll toggle this on the red color. That's fine. I want to go into here, select where the sets available minimum and the operator is going to be less than or equal to five. We can make this dynamic as well. We could set up a separate condition based off of information that we have entered in the database. So let's say if we have less than 20 bars available, we could set that and then kitchen chairs if there was less than 50 available. But for the time being, I'm just gonna set it across all our products. If we have less than five available, then it will show up in red here for us so that it's just a little bit of a visual indicator that we need to order more of the items that are used or the parts that are used to build this specific item. I'm going to toggle on the search box and that way we can easily find the products and items that are within the list here. And that's pretty much it for this specific view or interface. Now, when I click into this and we can see more detail into the specific item, we've got a couple things here, status, we can see price, quantity sold. Something else I want to add up here is the sets available. So I'll go up sets available and then that way we can see that number a little bit easier as well. So I'm going to go click into this option. There's a few things I want to get rid of here. Actually, in this case, I think I'm going to get rid of this entire element. So I'm going to delete that. I'm going to click this collection here. I'm going to go up to list type go down to the inventory items, and then I'm going to select table. From here, we can see all of the items that are going to be linked to the bar. Right now, 
we can see every item that is within our inventory items list that's found here. But what we want to do is just filter by the items that are linked to the specific item that we're viewing. For example, for the bar, if I go back to the inventory items, I really only want to see all the items that are linked here. I can do that by going into options, filter, link to inventory items collection. And now it's just showing me all of the items linked to the bar. Now we can go over to fields. We can toggle off some of these probably only need to see the, the link to part stock, basically the name and number of parts required, parts quantity used, that type of information. I can toggle off a couple of these sets in stock. I can turn that on and that looks to be pretty good for now. This has given us a pretty clean looking interface for each individual product or the inventory item there. And then when we click into it, we can see all of the parts that actually link to this item. We can see the number of parts required and the number of sets in stock. For the bar, I have not added anything in our purchase order items here right now. We only have inventory for the chair and the kitchen table. And if I go back into No Loco and go into our inventory products, we can see that here. So if I click kitchen chair, we can see that we have enough material to build at least 21 sets. And if we go down here, we can see there's a back, chair legs, and seats. As we go through all of our tables here and the information that we need to see, most of what we need to see is able to be replicated from the interfaces that we've already built for sales orders, sales order items, inventory and products. And again, depending on your organization, you might want to display this information a little bit differently. But once we get all the way down to purchase orders, we basically just need to rebuild what we did in the sales order and sales order items. And then we would just build that in the purchase orders and purchase order items. So a lot of the interfaces are pretty straightforward here. That's it for the interfaces side. I'm going to go into the workflows now. I want to go into sales order here. Now I want to add an action button in our sales orders. And from here, I'm going to choose the sales order. When we click into a sales order, I want an action button up here that when it is clicked, it will change this status to ready and it will email the customer that the item or that the whole order is ready. So what I can do is go down to the action buttons here. I'll hit the plus element. I'm going to rename the action to order ready. We can change the color here if we want. I'm just going to do one click to keep it simple. And then from here we can choose an action. So first thing what we need to do is go build a workflow. I'm going to go into workflows, create a workflow, and I want to do it from the sales order here. Then on demand triggered by an action button. When we click that button, this is when the workflow will be triggered. We can click add an action. The first thing that I want to do is update the record and we can update the sales order. The record ID is going to be dynamic based on the trigger, which is the button and we go ID and we will change the status and we can turn off this dynamic value and we'll change that to ready. And then down here, we can hit add action. We can be done on that first step, add an action, send an email, and we want to send the email to customer email that's found within this trigger. We go down here, click customer email. We can do subject, your order is ready. And if we want, we can bring in the sales order ID and then your order is ready. And that's good enough for now. I'll hit done. Actually, what I'm going to do up here first is I'm going to just change this to my email address so that I can demonstrate what it looks like. But what you probably want to do is have that be dynamic. I'll hit done. We can label this order ready, send email, and I'm just going to put brackets that it's a button and I can toggle that on. Now, if I go back to my app, click into the sales order and I'll go down to build mode here. I can go down here and set this action to run on demand based on the button click and the workflow we want to use is the order ready send email button. Something else I'm going to do is set up a notification here saying that it was a success. So that's good enough for now. I can hit done and we should be good to go. If I hit done over here, I'm able to test it. We can see that this order, a one 
is an ordered status right now. And if I flip over to our smart suite solution and go and do the sales orders, here's order 01. And here we can see it's ordered as well. If I go over to here, click the ordered ready in a moment, we'll see that button reappear switched to ready. And if I go over to our smart suite solution, we can see here that it's also been set to ready. And when I go into my email, I can see that I've got your order is ready and any information that we want to display to the customer, it will be sent to them just based off of that one button press. One last thing that we may want to do is hide that button based off of some sort of condition. For example, let's say that the status has been set to delivered. There's no reason to change the order status to ready and send them an email to say that the order is ready. What we can do is go into the action button. We'll click this edit button visibility, and we're going to add a custom rule. So we can go into select data and the sales order record page values, and we can go down to this order status is equal to, and we can again, turn off the dynamic value is delivered. And actually what we're going to do is not one of delivered. Now, if I hit done, I can see that the button is displaying for us, but if I go over here and click delivered, you will see that it is no longer visible. That's it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you hit that subscribe button for more tutorials in the future.